Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be fixing another Elden Ring build. This time it's the Greatest Katana in Gaming by Jaza97. This build is centered around the Moonvale, which he claims is the best katana in gaming. Now I don't know if that's true, and quite frankly I don't want to verify each katana in every game. However, what we can verify is the Greatest Katana in Elden Ring. But that's not Moonvale. For the vast majority of builds, that's going to be the Uchi Katana, or if you're in PvP, then Nagakiba. But as things like the Rivers of Blood have been nerfed over time, there has always been one Katana that has been an absolute beast and still holds up to this day. That particular Katana being the Moonvale. Vale. As I said, Moonvale vale isn't the best Katana. Certainly not in terms of DPS, and certainly not for using the skill on Sheath. Now it does have a special variation of Unsheath. To get the most out of its special variation, Transit Moonlight, you do want to be right close to the enemy, in which case you'd rather just use Unsheath because it does more damage. Since Transit Moonlight has been nerfed so much, it does less damage, even if you hit both parts of the weapon art in the vast majority of cases. If you're just looking at the one hand or one chain, Uchi Katana is going to outperform Moonvale with the same stats invested. An optimal build for the Uchi Katana, a magic Uchi Katana, will outperform even the optimal Moonvale build. And as a bonus, since the magic Uchi Katana basically only scales with int, you can push int to 80 and still have good spell damage. In an optimal Moonvale build, you want to cap your int at 50 and so you don't have as good of sorcery damage. As you can see, we've got 35 Vigor, 32 Mind, 25 Endurance, 12 Strength, 48 Dexterity, 50 Intelligence, 20 Faith, and 10 Arcane. We haven't put anything into Arcane, we only put the two that we needed into Strength to wield the weapon correctly, and then mainly focused on Intelligence and Dexterity as those are the two main scaling factors with this particular weapon. Now we'll discuss the other stats as I'm going through the video as well, but just to also pair those stats with some insane talismans, you're going to want to be looking to add things like the scorpion magic charm as that boosts magic damage by 12 percent that will be directly affecting the moon veil's ash of war as i mentioned earlier it is a magic damage dealing ability so that's what we're going to be focusing on is trying to build as much magic damage as possible with this build so the magic scorpion charm is a brilliant first talisman to put in there but obviously it does hinder us a little bit and we take a little bit more damage when this is equipped so to counteract that i have also included the dragon crest plus two uh, variant obviously you can use any dragon crest if you've got any in your infantry but ideally obviously you want to be using the best one possible because then that negates the extra damage you'll be taking with the scorpion charm equipped and again just to boost the ash of war even more we can use the shard of alexander as that again greatly boosts the skill powers such as the transient moonlight now the fourth talisman that i'm running is actually godfrey's icon that is because i'm pairing the moon veil with a sort of like really strong intelligence build so i am also using things like great valor Terra Magica as well to also boost the damage output with the Moon Veil. So that's why I'm using Godfrey's Icon as that will help boost my spells. It does not, just repeat, it does not boost any damage with the Moon Veil. Remember earlier where we uh, mentioned our stats and I had 20 faith? for some apparent reason. Well, the reason for that is if we pair everything that we've got at the moment with the Goldrick's Great Rune, we then give plus five to all of our attributes. Meaning, with Faith specifically, that will go to 25. And what do you need 25 Faith for? Our good old friend Golden Vow, as well as Flame Give Me Strength, you will also have enough faith to be using that. And as I mentioned earlier, if you're running like some sort of half-breed <laughs> mage build with this thing, you can also be using Terra Magica. All three of these buffs can be used at the same time to increase your damage output by quite a significant amount. And if you thought that that wasn't enough, you can also mix in your Wonder Physic, more specifically putting the Magic Shrouding Crack tier on it, as well as pretty much any other one that you'd like. His stats are quite bad too. He is at level 150, however, outside of Gauge's Great Rune, he doesn't even reach the 40 vigor soft cap. Now, he did mention that he is using Godric's, and so, yes, it does reach the 40 vigor soft cap. However, if you didn't have a rune arc, you wouldn't be reaching the, the first vigor soft cap, which is really bad at level 150 because you can easily reach 60 vigor, which is the final vigor soft cap at this level. He has 37 mind. As a pure caster build, that's fine. 
as a hybrid build when you're already so stretched thin for stats and you can't reach 60 vigor it's not a good idea to increase mind any further than you actually need to 30 endurance is also really high now granted he does have heavier armor especially compared to the build that i'm running but the armor is not optimized and you certainly don't need 30 endurance to use that armor it's a waste of stats and you easily could have put that into figure so you at least had a little bit more because he's complaining about getting one shot in pvp with 40 vigor well most players run 60 vigor there's probably a reason for that then he has 53 dexterity 60 dexterity would be the breakpoint for moonbell for intelligence he has 55 he should have gotten either 50 for the moonbell breakpoint or going to 60 for spells then he has 25 faith for golden vow and flame grant me strength kind of disappointing because commander standard a lot less stat intensive with a greater benefit and you don't have to waste all those points in faith you can get 16 strength and two-handed and you're totally fine that's another place where he could have put more points into vigor instead of wasting it sprinkling around on stats that he didn't really need this damage does carry over to pvp and it is also known for being sort of like a one-shot weapon on an optimized build you should never be one shot by moon veil as you can see here yes because of how high the damage negation is moon veil is outperforming my uchi katana However, does not come close to one-shotting. If you have properly leveled Vigor, and you have proper armor, and hopefully you're playing on Seamless, if not, I'm terribly sorry for you console players. In this case, it's actually a four-shot. I don't know where the myth that Moonvale can one-shot came from, because even on the day one patch, Moonvale could not one-shot. It just didn't have enough damage for a properly made build. And I actually have all the old data for Moonvale, so if you want to, in the comments, I can go in depth on the actual damage Moonvale does compared to today. But Moonvale never one shot, unless if you're running a really bad build, which, to be fair, more people did back in the day. Now, for my improved build. I have 60 of air because that is the bigger soft cap. That is what you want to reach at level 150. And if you're going into New Game Plus or doing some PvP, you need to have 60 of vigor. I have 31 mine because I had nothing else to reasonably invest into at this level. I have 11 endurance to not fat roll. 16 strength, so when I two hand. The commander standard I can use the ash of war to get me a boost of damage and damage negation that is better than using golden vow then I have 15 dexterity for the uchi katana stat requirement and I have 80 intelligence because that is the final intelligence soft cap and that will provide my uchi katana and all of these spells that you would want to do the most damage possible for the weapons, obviously we have the Uchi Katana with Unsheath. However, if you're going to optimize this for DPS, I would recommend using Spinning Slash. It's just much better. Then we have Commander Standard, which I've already went over. And then we have Lusat's Glintstone Staff. Some people argue that Carrion Regal is better because it doesn't have the 50% increased FP cost. I disagree because I have enough mind where that doesn't matter. For the Talismans, I have Shard of Alexander, Magic Scorpion Charm, Drain Crest Great Shield Talisman and Radagon Icon. The Shard of Alexander is going to boost my Ash of War damage. The Magic Scorpion Charm is going to boost all my magic damage. The Drain Crest Great Shield Talisman increases my survivability. And the Radagon Icon, if you haven't watched my video on it, I recommend you should, because it increases some spells DPS by up to 12%. If you're going for DPS, you never want to charge a spell. For the armor, we have Azura Skinstone Crown, which will boost our Comet damage, but it also increases our FP consumption a little bit more. Then we have Terra Magica boosting our magic damage, Rining Stark Moon inflicting frost and decreasing the target's magic damage negation, and any other spell you want you can put in. I used Lurida's Great Bow, 
because it helps with faraway enemies, where a comet just doesn't reach. For the crystal tiers, we have the Magic Shrouding Crack tier, boosting our magic damage even more, and we have the Opaline Hard tier, boosting our damage negation. Now here's some real-world calculations for the Ashes of War comparison. Moonbell will be on top, and Uchikatana will be on the bottom, because Uchikatana does more damage, and so it can show you the damage increase. This is against Elden Beast. I did have to calculate the weapon hit separately because it does do a different instance of damage compared to just using compared to just the beam. With his build, assuming no buffs are applied, he's doing 632 damage. Now, if he was also to hit with the weapon, he would add another 123 damage on top of that. The hits to live is 35. It's not bad especially because you're only using an Ash of War against the final boss in the game. However, if you were to use an Uchigatana with Unsheath and the stats I have provided to you, you'd have a 60% damage increase, doing 1016 damage per Ash of War. It would take you 22 hits to kill Elden Beast, instead of the 35 with Moonbale. This isn't even factoring in buffs, so this is quite the damage increase. Now, as we move on from the Elden Beast, we can take a look at the average PvE defense and negation, which does drop our damage increase to only 41%. Now, if we factor in buffs, you can see that Moonvale is doing around 3,200 damage if you also hit with the weapon hit. That's pretty high, especially considering this will be your average damage against the entire game. However, the Uchikatana is going to do 1,000 more than that, roughly leading to a 50% damage increase. That's a lot, especially considering you're also gaining increased survivability on top of this. Because remember, his build only had 40 vigor. So in conclusion then, if you were to use a katana for PvE purposes, and it was not a pure dex build where you were not going to use an Ash of War, use Uchi Katana. It is better than Rivers of Blood, it is better than Moonvale, it can have the Ash of War changed, fit into any build you like. You don't have to do a weird hybrid build like you do with Moonvale or Rivers of Blood. It is just the superior option, and it also has lower stat requirements. It is very easy to acquire, you don't have to fight any bosses, you don't have to wait till the fire giant to get it. 